After years of waiting, praying, and hoping, Suzuki has finally revealed their little class monster, the GSXR 1000, and it looks properly badass and sounds promising on the paper. The new Suzuki has come loaded with equipment to make you a faster and better rider on street as well as on track. The new GSXR has got launch control, 10 levels of traction control, bi-direction quick shifter, Showa balance free forks, and the list of goodies just goes on. While the electronic gizmos like traction control and bi-directional quick shifter will put this beast on par with the competition, the thing that really sets the GSXR apart from the rest is the new variable wall timing derived from the MotoGP bike. Of course, this is not a new technology. Ducati has the electronically controlled desmodromic wall timing on their Multistrada. Kawasaki offers the GTR 1400 with hydraulic variable wall timing. But the key factor that differentiates the Suzuki system is that it is completely mechanically controlled. The Suzuki design splits the cam sprocket into two halves. One half carries the sprocket itself, the other attaches to the camshaft. And these two halves can rotate relative to each other for a few degrees. Instead of using complex electronics or hydraulics for the controlling purpose, this system has radial grooves machined onto the inner face of each face's halves into which the steel balls are placed. Those balls move outwards under the influence of centrifugal force as the RPM increase. If you look at the grooves on these two plates, you can see that they have been cut at different angles and they don't exactly line up. As the ball moves towards the outer edge, the two half of the phaser will rotate in relation to each other since the grooves on one half is cut at a certain angle. This will retard the valve timing. These grooves get shallower at the outer edge on both the plates. As the ball move outward, they force the two halves of the phaser apart. The one half of the phase which is attached to the camshaft through splines will move away from the other. This will retard the timing and will give a better top end power. At the lower RPMs, the spring that keep both the halves pressed together overcomes the centrifugal force acting on the balls, pushing them back towards each other. This will shift the timing to its advanced position, boosting the low end power and improving the throttle response. Since there is no electronics or hydraulics, the tuning of this VVT system is a fidgety process. It requires disassembly of the components, replacing the steel balls with of different weights, reassembly of the entire system, and testing the result to confirm the new setting. So that's pretty much how the Suzuki's racing VVT system in the new GSXR works. So if you guys enjoy this video, please hit that subscribe button and I would love to hear your thoughts. So please comment down below. Also, a like would be much appreciated. See you guys next time. Bye.